Uh, I actually say in my book that I see Leonardo da Vinci as the first eco-designer, you know, 500 years before this uh, school of eco-design emerged in the 20th century, uh, because he takes nature as his model and as his mentor. And he says that the inventions of nature are always superior to human inventions and we should respect her and learn from her. And uh, when he made his designs, for example, his designs of flying machines, which was a great passion in, in his life, he often modeled the wings of his machines so closely after the wings of birds that today historians of science have a hard time distinguishing whether a particular drawing is a drawing of a wing of a bird or a wing of his flying machine. So definitely Leonardo was uh, worked in the spirit of what we now call eco-design. But there's another aspect where we can learn a lot from Leonardo <clears throat> and that is that he was what we would now call a systemic thinker. That is whenever he saw a problem or you know an, uh, an area of investigation he would relate it to similar patterns in other areas. And as I mentioned already, you know, the flow of water in rivers and creeks, the flow of blood in the human body, the flow of vital sap in plants. So those are three areas that he studied. And whenever he made progress in one area, he would revisit the other areas and apply his knowledge. He always saw how things hang together. In fact, Explaining things for Leonardo largely consisted in showing how things were connected to other things. And this is something that we need very much in our time, <clears throat> because our academic disciplines have become very fragmented. And the major problems of our time are systemic problems that cannot be solved by one discipline, but you know, by, by many disciplines.